Uh, so, Tom and TJ are working on a differential equations book. Albert Schiller at Whitman College. Uh, William Trench released a whole bunch of books open source. He wants to try and convert that. Uh, I, I got myself going on this by just doing a one-off, totally messy XML kind of thing with my linear algebra textbook. It is going to be really easy to convert from the one screwy XML that I did to the XML that I'm trying to build for everybody, and, and I will eventually do that. Uh, so let's look at this sample article. That's going to be my editor. So macros, right? So there, there are two macros that I use in this sample article. Those will, of course, go into your preamble on the tech side, and then they go into your MathJax configuration in a way that math, math, you used to have to write separate versions of your macros, kind of JavaScripty for MathJax. Now you can just slam in the, the regular old tech one. So they go the right place. Can you use the is it X include? Uh, yes. And so you could, it, yes. like we usually, we've got a you know, multiple page file of yeah. math macros. Yeah. TJ started, his first project was to do, you know, two or three levels deep of X includes for a, a set of homework things. Okay. And, and yes, everything's, the big projects are modular like that. And that works, that works quite well. So like people have to be warned not to use LT and GT as macros somewhere in this. Did I understand correctly? You, you should use slash LT and slash GT. For less than or greater than. Correct. So if you accidentally have those, some, if you just copy your, some horrible preamble you've had for 20 years. Yeah, you're, you're gonna get some messes. Your, your XML, the XML processing will fail because it was. And sometimes it doesn't fail. Yeah. And <laughs> you get straight characters and you just gotta go clean them out by hand. Uh, the LaTeX processing is the most demanding. You can build a web page and, and MathJax just says, Here's a bunch of junk I didn't understand, and it doesn't tell you why. The best, the best error checking on your source is to try and build a PDF, and, and you'll get good. You know, you get the usual messages. So this is this is the kitchen sink. This is and this is the documentation sample article that kind of comes with the distribution. If you pull stuff, go and read this and reverse engineer. I've tried to comment it fairly heavily, but when I implement a new feature, I often slam it in here someplace. And it kind of made sense, but now nothing makes any sense anymore. It's, it's a crazy thing. Uh, you know, so there's a, there's a, it gets, you know, it gets a little bit verbose, but there's a theorem. It's got a title. You can choose whether to include that in, in what gets spit out. Um, I haven't quite figured it. There's an index entry. So you can do main and you can do a couple of subs. There's the statement of the theorem. It needs to be a collection of paragraphs. There's the proof. It needs to be a collection of paragraphs. And this is going to allow you to do things like in the HTML, display the proof, and then have a link for the, or excuse me, display the statement of the theorem, and then have a link that gets you the proof in a, in a null which opens up, or a pop-up, or whatever, you know, a separate page, or whatever you might want to do. Uh, so again, there's a lot of screwy stuff in here. Let me show you one thing that... Tables are a little bit verbose. I'm trying to follow some other model for HTML tables. I don't like this slash entry, but. And the asymptote stuff's not yet working. GeoGebra. So, I, and this will, I, I can clean this up and do a better job of this. A, a GeoGebra applet, you can get sort of a base64 encoding. It probably makes more sense to put this in a file and, and just point to the file. But uh, for whatever reason, I have it sitting all here in the source, and it goes on and on and on. Of course, that, that base 64 is, it is XML, ultimately. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen that too, right, yeah. yeah. This is just the first thing I did, and it worked. And uh, What do you do, what do you do with a geo, and that, this is a bigger question, what do you do with a GeoGebra applet in a PDF? So I have two ideas, one is you show a static screenshot that may or may not be very interesting and representative of what the applet does. The other is you're just gonna, I'm just going to put a little GeoGebra logo out in the margin and say, knock yourself out, you know, the, go to the HTML. The, the, the GGB file is a compressed, it's a zip file um, of XML, and it has a screenshot. Okay. Um, and that's, I mean, you, yeah, we can talk about the Yeah, sure, later. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, for Sage Cells, one idea for the PDF version is to do the phase 64 encoding or whatever it is, and, I, and I've got sort of proof of concept code. I can wrap that up in a QR code. So in a PDF, next to the Sage Cell, there could be a QR code that you could hit with your cell phone with a, with a scanner with a QR reader that would take you to a, a single one-shot web page uh, running that, that Sage code. You wouldn't get the linkages that you'd sort of need from one or the other. So here is what I did. But I'm going to vote for at least having the option for the screenshot. Just, yeah. That could be some global. Yeah, and I think I would, yeah, right, yeah. Um, yeah, so here's what here's what I did with GeoGebra. I just, I mean, in, I don't use GeoGebra that much. In two minutes of poking around, mm -hmm. I found that I could make a Tixi yeah. screenshot. Right. And I already knew how to handle Tixi. So here's the Tixi code that I cut and paste out of the GeoGebra something. And put that in. So I, I do get a nice visual image of this GeoGebra applet in the in the PDF when we build it. I'm not sure there's a whole lot more. Uh, it, it, video. I'm using the Flow Player app. So anything anything you can put on a web page, you can smash into the HTML version that I'm producing. HTML version you get the applet. Yes, that's right. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. In HTML, it's sitting there, and you can pull things and drag things. And, and I think the sample will also put up a blank camp. There's two samples for GeoGebra. One's an application that does some kind of centers of circles things, and there's another one that's just a blank canvas if you want to go scribble and experiment. Yeah, and the tag for that is just like one like that. If you just want a blank GeoGebra camp canvas, you just put one empty tag there, and that's what you get. Almost done. Uh, So some things I want to do with Sage is uh, Sage plot. So you put in a bunch of Sage code, and whatever the, la the last line should produce a graphic. And then I'll wrap that all up, and you'll get the graphic in your various versions. Uh, doc test, so random, long time, no, all the various options to doc test instead of putting the hash in your doc test and perhaps confusing your reader, put it as an attribute. Uh, I'd like to take something book length, hopefully I can get to that in the next couple of days, something book length and turn it into multiple worksheets and, and get a nice list in the, in the Sage notebook. Uh, we've got a bunch of CSS, I need to sort of isolate the stuff that I could use to make the SMC version look nicer and, and do the load properly on the CSS in the, in the Sage Math Cloud. And you know, there's been some discussion on the math cloud list, the Sage math cloud list about magic commands. So the XML highlighting and all is not bad in CodeMirror. So you could create this thing in CodeMirror and and put a percent uh, math book in front of it and have it turn into something, uh, PDF or HTML or both. I guess maybe there's some options to that. So like I said, I think sort of the attributes have settled down, but there's all kinds of things that could be added. Uh, I've had a request for asymptote graphics. If I opened another front, it might be this EPUB, but if there's sort of a, a profile, they call it, for educational works, and I think I can write that stuff out quite cleanly, and that's uh, Pearson and O'Reilly, I think, are sort of the main players behind those, that, uh, that standard, but I think I can create that stuff. I have not done a document type definition to validate against because I keep changing my mind about things, but eventually I'll build one and start to be rigorous about where you need to nest different things and, and what will be guaranteed to work and not. A nice thing to add that I just discovered the other day is this sculpt that, that runs Python in your browser, I believe. So you could put a chunk of Python code and actually it's sort of like the Sage cell server, but I think it all happens in your browser. Uh, Video chat with your professor in the book? I, I don't know. You know, that's, that's, that's doable. So if, if you think of things uh, and, and want to sit down with me the next, couple, next few days, uh, I'd love to hear what you're, uh, what you're interested in. So like I say, a few people are authoring, and if you're, if you're willing to put up with a little bit of misdirection, uh, you know, do it this way, and then three weeks later, well, that was a bad idea, do it this way. But, but the, you know, if you write your XML carefully, I can usually write an XML a converter that just duplicates everything 
and fixes the things that I've changed my mind about. And I'll be doing that for Tom for a couple of things that I've misdirected him on. So, um, so I think yeah, I think you can if you're adventurous and, and want to start doing some projects with this, I'm ready to start supporting people. There's a website that has a few of these examples I showed you. It's got all the information about where to get it off GitHub. And I really encourage questions on the Google group. So you know, you know, put them there so that other people can see what's going on and, and benefit from the answers if they serve us in a few weeks and, and want to look back and see what's been going on. Any questions? I had some good ones. Have you considered something sort of markdown-like that would just use sort of reasonable defaults, but it's written in a much less robust way? So I, I have trouble with things like Markdown because they I find them hard to process because they don't always tell you where stuff ends. Uh -huh. You know, uh, what do you what do you use? What what is the purpose of slash par in tech? What what does it do? You know, that sounds like a trick question. <laughs> does, does slash par begin a paragraph? Does slash par end a paragraph? I think it begins one. Separates them. Never use that in my life. <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, here's a here's a real trick question. What does slash chapter do? Starts chapter. Unless it comes after slash back matter, in which case it starts an appendix. So the, I mean, the more the more time I spend with these various languages and the more idiosyncrasies they have, like that, and that's extreme example. Is an appendix not a chapter? Well, you get the word appendix instead of yeah. It's it's yeah, it's, a, it's a special kind of chapter. It's a special kind. It's a subclass of chapter. Yeah. The o the only reason I ask this question is just that it's. I think that would increase adoption of something like this. Yeah, but I mean, so what? Why in why instead of mark? I guess I don't entirely understand. I mean, we have markdown. What what do you? Well, if you so this is a, a more highly structured document that has you know to potentially transform into a bunch of different formats. It's part of a system that you're developing. Right. And um, this, this would be great for teaching people. You know, people want to write math papers, but don't want to have to, you know, put all the p tags in a proof or think about all the different components of the theorem statement. Um, but I think I think I'm just guessing. I mean, yeah. This is a question. It's yeah, just yeah. A question. No, I, yeah. I, I would wonder if more people would be happy to learn something that's much lighter on on, right. on their on their mental load. Yeah, and would but, drive yes. adoption of a system. Right. Yes. Yeah. So it would be possible to write a converter from I mean, Markdown, 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 Markdown script to, that converts to, to HTML. Yeah. So I mean, there should be a way right. to yeah. use them. Like and there's and there's PamDoc. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think is is perhaps addressing a lot of what you're talking about. So um, yeah, I, I I don't know. My my so so what's my purpose in all this? I want more open source textbooks out there. That's what's driving me. And and I want to get good materials about Sage. So that's why, you know, that's, um, and, and I guess I think of this, I use this for everything because that's what I want to do. But something simple, I'm not sure that's what you want to do, but if you want to write a book, mm -hmm. get the right tools and, and do it seriously. It almost seems to me like you could make a converter from your idea of Markdown to his XML. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of his suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just make that like a set. Yeah. You don't have to make him do it. Just I'm do not it. suggesting yeah. that he do it. I'm just, I'm oh, just yeah, putting yeah. this out there as a thing. Right. It seems yeah. like a good idea. It's part of it in the context yeah, of this. Yeah, the PanDoc will convert to XML uh -huh. um, from, from, the mark, from the Markdown. Okay. And so that might, you know, you, that could be a starting thing. Uh -huh. But very, it's really easy if you're already in XML to convert to some other flavor of XML. Yeah. So, so, I, mean, so I guess maybe. That's there. Uh -huh. Maybe do do whatever, and let Pandoc turn it into XML, mm -hmm. and let's write something that takes Pandoc XML uh -huh. to mine, and then the payoff is you're going to get our HTML and our CSS, and you're going to get IPython, and, and yeah. maybe you like that better than whatever Pandoc is going to write. Uh -huh. so that might be possible to write the, uh, the main file uh, in your system, but then for smaller cells like uh, just a statement of the theorem or just a proof or use uh, Markdown syntax with some marker and then the converter first takes just a little piece, puts it on the proper format and uh, then goes further. 
Yeah, yeah, so, so I guess I, so you, I guess I could have a markdown element. Uh -huh. you know, yeah. Everything that's coming down the pipe right now is going to be marked down and, and try and deal with that somehow. That would be a, is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. Is so it's you kind of the, like a magic commands in uh, Sageman's Cloud. Uh, yeah, yeah. You say that right. the whole block is uh, in this right. Block. Yeah, that's something to think about. Thanks for your attention. I'm around if you want to talk one on one. I um, guess we'll have a short break. Go and reload your coffee, get a bag. I, when are we scheduled? 10:45. Oh, Chris. perfect. Okay. Yeah. So we got 14 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>